I'm Eric, N1JUR, and welcome to my HF truck build video series. Um, I'm going to start this video series with a bunch of different areas that I'm going to go into a lot more detail uh, in the build itself so you can get a better idea of how and the why I put all of the components together to make what I think is a really good HF install for uh, my mobile uh, HF experience. These videos are going to include things like bonding and grounding. I'm going to go into more detail of the center console install. I'm going to share a boatload of information on my experiences with doing digital and FT8 uh, from my mobile setup, as well as uh, go into more details along the way about how it works in the field, whether I feel like the field testing that I've done to it is going to basically stand the test of time. So if you're starting here in this video uh, first, I would say uh, take a second, step back, go uh, into the description and click the playlist and catch the introductory video first. That way you get an idea of what you can kind of expect and uh, hopefully it'll uh, you know, help you uh, look for you know, ideas and um, parts that you might want to put in your HF uh, build. So. Also want to invite you to come be part of the conversation in the comments below of every video please let me know how you're doing it what you what you've done for your builds whether or not you think you agree or disagree with my installation uh, as i want to be able to improve this and make it the best install that i can uh, put together in my truck and i know anything that i build today may not stand the test of time so you know, your input can help me make that a little bit better. And at the same time, if there are products that I might have missed that, you know, maybe I can test in the field um, for you guys that I'd love to hear about them and maybe integrate them into the build. Um, again, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos around this uh, in the future. Right now, we're um, really just going to try to field test it, see what uh, sticks, what does work, what doesn't work. And then um, I'm going to also be considering uh, future, you know, designs and upgrades uh, like um, battery builds, um, solar, uh, permanent solar on the truck, not portable, but permanent, uh, and then solar charging and on and on and on. So hopefully, uh, you know, you're interested and you want to watch more of this stuff. So again, please help support the channel. Uh, and head over and become either a Patreon or a YouTube uh, member. And um, we're going to just keep feeding these videos into you guys. And, and we want to, you know, make this a, an interactive process. So, you know, again, let's uh, dive in. Part of why I'm doing this is I sh uh, I'll show you that I'm here in a nice little RFI alternator wine. Do the fact that the truck has a lot of RFI interference. I'm going to walk you through some of the steps of how I bonded the doors, the hood, the bed, and the exhaust to sh hopefully show that through all of the stuff I'll be able to have a better experience when I'm operating mobile and driving. So for what it's worth, this is my experience. Your mileage may vary, but hopefully it will give you some idea of what the process might look like if you wanted to kind of go down the road and do this to your vehicle. First is uh, you're going to need obviously a, a good uh, cordless drill. You're going to need a punch uh, to be able to put um, a small little indentation so the drill bit doesn't run. In my case I am using um, self-tapping screws with the, the nut end, so I have that for my drill, and then you just need uh, the uh, smaller, I don't know what size this one is, uh, bit to be able to drill a pilot hole in the new metal you've cut. Okay, so let's start with the driver's side here. Uh, what I've done is uh, inserted these straps uh, that you can buy off of Amazon here. And you'll see that in that screw, um, I've scraped off the paint. You got uh, some black um, rust proof primer on there. And that is uh, then anchored to the door uh, screw here, which is also bonded to the panel. And I scraped off all the paint 
in that screw. Um, so I've got a metal to metal contact uh, for. This is the install here for the passenger side uh, or driver side rear door. I've got the screw here. The strap um, is nice and tight, <clears throat> but it's not uh, loose where it can't catch on anything. And so uh, when we're moving the, the door, you'll see that the strap stays pretty, um, you know, flat and doesn't uh, have any kinks or weird um, notches in it. And so that's uh, the mounting there. And if we go around to the other side, you'll see that uh, the screw's there and I just got to apply a little bit more black paint uh, primer um, rust proofer to that uh, connection there so we don't get any rust. Go to the hood side here. Now underneath the hood here, you'll see that I've got from the hood latch and the hood itself, I've got a long strap that goes down here and bonds to this grounding screw, which is already tied into the electrical here. So now I've got a, a electrical bond from up here in the hood to down here to the actual ground in the truck itself. Uh, always, you can't forget your tailgate because in essence your tailgate um, is again another plane uh, and it's not electrically connected to the vehicle. So with that, we've um, I had to cut the, the strap a little short for this one, uh, but I bonded it to the tailgate here and then it goes underneath and it ties into uh, the frame here or into the body itself. Um, and then at that point, this overall bed will get tied into the frame. If you have a scenario like I have here where I've got a back rack where my ATAS is tied into, you gotta be able to bond this, the bed, all to the frame down below. And so you can see I've got a small cavity down here and a decent surface right here, which I can probably mount a, a bond here and run that down to the frame. But this antenna, I'm gonna probably have to take the nut off of it and run a grounding strap from here to here, just so things stay neat and tidy attaching it to the radio. And so I have this long braided cable that I'm going to run underneath the dash and feed through here. Here's the last grounding point. So I showed you the radio and this I've confirmed is actually mounted or screwed into the frame itself. So is it the most optimum location for grounding? I don't know, we'll, we'll, time will tell. But in essence, uh, I noticed that the back of the radio and this grounding point uh, continuity wise looks good. Um, there are a number of other locations underneath here that I could probably mount to if I need to down the road uh, to get a better ground. Uh, but I think that mounting bracket, which actually supports the rest of the console and all of the other stuff should suffice. This setup, what I'm going to do is you'll need just a simple Dremel tool. Um, and with that, what I'm going to do is find a place here where I want to bond uh, to both of these panels. And the easiest thing to do is um, to clean off your surface first. And then with the strap, you're going to find uh, a way to obviously get both sides of the panel. Now, you, uh, with every grounding strap, you're gonna have a, a little ridge here, and that's the ridge that you wanna make sure that everything's flat to the metal, because you want the best bond between the grounding strap, uh, the screw, and the washer to the actual body itself. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a spot here, right about here, and probably somewhere over here on this door, and I'm just gonna take, my, just gonna use my Dremel here with a grind off wheel and we're going to take uh, the paint off.
Okay, so there you can see that I got down to the metal. And so at this point, I'm just gonna tap a small hole to start. And then from there, I'm going to uh, put the uh, screw in and attach the grounding. Got the strap, and I got to pay close attention to the fact that the flat side of the strap is going in the right direction. So when I actually screw this in, everything goes in the way it should. And so we're just gonna tighten this down now. There we go. Okay, so. That is the strap right there. Now with this side, all I'm gonna do is pick this location here. And uh, this seems to be a good spot here. So I'm just gonna grind off the paint and get this bonded on this side. Everything is mounted, and we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of um, rust primer, black, just to keep everything from uh, rusting. Now we're gonna bond the exhaust to the body, and so I am using these new exhaust brackets, and I'm going to attach the braided strap to one side, like so, like this, and then I'm gonna fix it with the nut, and then the other side of the strap is just gonna get bounded to the frame, and I'm gonna grind all that stuff off and get that mounted. At this point, everything has been pretty much grounded. I think I've got the hoods, I've got the body, I've got the exhaust, I've got the tailgate, I've got the bed, all the doors are bonded. So we should be in pretty good shape. So let's button things back up, do a couple of quick tests, and then see if we see any improvement. Uh, this is on 20 meters currently. So bottom line is I, just going to have to chalk it up to either the alternator or the electronics not having good uh, grounding. So 20 meters here is going to be a little uh, challenging. I know when I tried 40 when I was running, the truck ended up in limp mode uh, or it was telling the speed control was out of uh, whack. So I can keep tweaking it and trying to improve it, but I think I'm just going to end up operating uh, with the alternator off and running on a, a spare battery. And we'll keep uh, improving upon it and I'll keep you updated. So here are my final thoughts on all of this. You probably have gotten to the final end of the video and realized, well, what, what's the point of doing bonding or grounding my vehicle? 
a lot of times I think we always look for like a quick fix. Like if we do A and B, C is gonna happen. A lot of times in electronics and even in ham radio and when dealing with RF and, and the like, there's a lot of factors and a lot of things you gotta kind of weigh in on. And so I guess the one thing I wanna have you guys come away with in this video is that doing all of those steps, bonding to the frame, bonding the tailgates, bonding the body panels, bonding the doors, all of that has an importance and a value. But on top of that, you have to look at it as, there are many other components in a lot of these newer modern vehicles. Now, if I had a vehicle that was like maybe in the 70s, early 80s, there's a lot less electronics in the build of that, that vehicle. I know uh, doing a lot more research with my Dodge Ram, that um, there's uh, fuel pump um, issues that people have reported uh, causing a lot of RFI and, and similar things like that, that, that may not be traditionally like the radio being the issue or um, another component like the alternator. Uh, those tend to be pretty well, we'll say, isolated from causing a lot of that interference like before where they might have been the big culprit. Um, so I'm going to try to keep doing some more research and trying to isolate this. I am not 100% sure I'm going to be able to completely eliminate the problem. But in essence, I know that when I'm in the vehicle and I'm, say I am running uh, the, the engine at the time while I'm operating on HF, the nice thing about the 891 is that it's got a nice noise blanker. That noise blanker knocks 90% of that RFI buzzing noise that you heard uh, in the video right out. I can hear stations no problem. I can make contacts with folks. Um, so there is, in essence, a fix for it. That, that, that noise blanker that was developed in that 891 does some amazing things. And if I really want to dial in, say I'm having a rag chew, which I don't do often, I can turn DNR on and use uh, digital noise reduction to even totally take out weaker you know, noises in the, the, the whole pass band there. So, so you have those two other tools built in your radio and I have those pre-programmed to my uh, you know, fast quick buttons on the front of the 891. So those options may help you. Again, thanks for watching this video. I appreciate uh, all the support and uh, you know, hopefully this was super helpful for you. Maybe it gave you a couple of new ideas yourself for your own uh, setups in your own HF mobiles. Uh, and uh, love to hear your feedback on it. You know, feel free to throw those in the comments down below. And thanks again for watching 7.3 and stay tuned for the next video.